If you don't know who I am, I'm Prince Productions. Well, actually, I'm not Prince Productions. My real name is Nico, but uh, welcome to the channel. Also, this microphone is not actually connected, but we're just gonna make it look like it is. I have honestly no idea what I'm doing with this channel, but I do have an idea which, which uh, I have an idea which could work, and we're gonna try that. As uh, we're just talk about movies. Because why? what do I like? Movies. Also, by the way, before we get started, this video is actually sponsored by The Usual Rejects. They're not actually sponsoring us because that's actually uh, one of my other channels that I work on with my friends, but we're going to pretend they're sponsoring us. So <laughs> The Usual Rejects is a weekly podcast where uh, those fine young gentlemen over there talk about movies and TV shows every week. So it's like this, but longer and every week. So go check them out. Plus, they also have video commentaries. They recently posted... Um, Breaking Bad video commentary and uh, there's more to come. They're gonna start doing movies, TV episodes. You know how that shable goes. But um, as you can tell by the title, we are talking about the new TMNT Mayhem. It's kind of amazing, except for maybe a couple things. It's amazing though. First of all, Splinter's kind of, he's kind of an odd, he's kind of an odd thing in this movie. Um, As much as I like Jackie Chan in the role as Splinter, I think, I think he does a really good job. The whole concept of, of him learning martial arts through Videos is, is, is a bit weird because I'm more used to the traditional like of oh, these turtles are ninja masters, but but I think I've come to, kind of come around to it, especially considering that they are they are 15 in the film. They're they're pretty young. <laughs> they're really young actually. I I, don't, I think that's all right. I don't know. They also grew up on YouTube. It could have been executed better. I think it would have been cooler <laughs> if he knew some kind of martial arts before he be, you mutated. Okay, as, as, as silly as the 2003 Splinter was in the sense that he was a rat that watched a man fight and he learned how to fight, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of worked. And I feel like that didn't, that didn't really work all that much for this film, but that's all right, that's all right. The turtles themselves, they were actually, they were, they were great. I, I love that they actually cast kids in this. They cast teenagers instead of uh, grown men which I, I really do appreciate. Um, Michael Bay knows a thing or two about uh, grown men Ninja Turtles. Ones that are bulletproof for some reason. Why are they seven feet tall if they're teenagers? Um, there's a lot of things that we don't quite understand in this world and that is one of those things. But I really, like I said, I really do appreciate the fact that they were kids. Behind the scenes, they would they would let the, the, the teens improvise and, and they all recorded together. And I think that was great because that's where you get real moments. You get real teen dialogue where they would just talk about like youtube and stuff and i think that's so sick and their designs as well too they're so scrawny except for raf but raf's always been a, a little chungster <laughs> why is raf missing a tooth i don't know why does mikey have <clears throat> braces the world will never know how does how does that even work that seems very painful maybe they're just cosmetic they just they just simply look like the braces but they're not i don't they're really great the designs are cool they they're scrawny and, and i really like that it looks it makes them look like they could exist in a real world although if they did exist in a real world well that would cause a lot of issues <laughs> i'm just saying i think the villain was really cool too it's an interesting twist to to take superfly and not make him baxter stockman which i feel like is a bit of a wasted opportunity considering they had giancarlo esposito voice baxter stockman and yet they killed them they kill them off in like the first 10 minutes of the film. Not my cup of tea, but hopefully they bring him back. Even as such, a, even if he's just a brain. I mean, they've they've done that before. Baxter Stockman's kind of crazy. Though Ice Cube as Superfly, he could make you think he's you're his best friend, but he could also like kill you in like an instant. And I really like that about him. It kind of made him very creepy, very intimidating. The other villains were cool. I mean, it is called called Mune Mayhem, so you kind of expect a lot of Munes, and my only gripe with that is that it's kind of like they checked off a box. They just have this, they, they've grouped them all together <clears throat> and they'll have moments here and there. But for the most part, they don't, they don't really do much, especially Bebop and Rocksteady, um, big players in, in TMNT lore. They've been around for forever. I feel like they don't do much and that kind of sucked. Although I do think Gecko Man's, uh, who is voiced by Paul Rudd, by the way, I learned this after I watched the film, was really good. I never even recognized him as Paul Rudd. And he was so much more like Mikey than Mikey was in the film. Another criticism I have is, is the lack of Mikey, Mikey, if that makes any sense. Like Mikey was Mikey, but Mikey's always been the funny one. He's always been the, the more silly one. But it felt like in this film, the four are already pretty silly. So it's, it's hard to make him stand out. We'll see, we'll see what they do with that. I think the more, the more we see of these turtles and grow with them, I think they'll be more mature, but Mikey will still maintain his, 
his juvenile youth, which I think uh, will be an interesting take on, on on him keeping him young, I suppose. Yeah, the villains. I don't really feel like villains. Superfly is obviously the only one who's like really evil because he's he was abandoned and he was attacked and then he 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 attacked the mans, the people who killed his his father and raised his brothers and sisters. Um, and then at the end of the film, he just becomes a giant kaiju, which I love. And the fact that they defeated him using an Attack on Titan reference was the best thing ever. It's not the first time we've seen Attack on Titan play a role in, in modern animation. I mean, we saw it in, in uh, the last Puss in Boots movie where he 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 ran up big man's arms. And that was, that was definitely a reference to Attack on Titan. And now we have this, you know, always attack the neck. So... If there's ever a giant monster in your area, go for the neck. That's 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 how you do it. And um, that was really cool. And I love I love the way they included New York in that final scene because um, I always I've always loved the the concept of like having the movie be defined by the people. I mean, they did it obviously in Spider-Man One, where where people of New York are cheering on Spidey. And I love that they brought that back. That that moment is so iconic. And the fact that they, they did it again was really, really cool. Now, in terms of the ending itself, I'm a bit iffy on it. I'm 50-50 I'm, I'm because on one hand, I think it is great that they got to go to high school and live out their dreams. But it also raises a lot of questions because now they've got a target on their back. Well, there are these green mutant ninja turtles that people don't quite understand how they exist. So obviously the government's going to be trying to milk them as they, as they did earlier in the film, trying to figure out who and what they are right why do they want to be in high school that is going to be a good setup for the sequel and in terms of sequel i so my theory right is that uh they're going to introduce casey jones he's going to be this cool tough guy and then he's gonna he april's gonna like be like oh my gosh i want to be with the, with him and then leo's gonna be like no -uh, create an interesting dynamic so well i'm excited to see where they take that uh it's a good film i enjoyed it it does have its moments i i think the film is almost too funny at moments it gets really meta and i love meta stuff they reference a lot of real life stuff they should have taken some some time to just slow down and and be a little serious a little more serious i suppose i think it would have benefited the story in the long run but overall i think it was still a great film the animation was of course spectacular i didn't i didn't really talk too much about it but we've already heard enough about it it's it's like a kid drew it and that's the whole aesthetic they're going for and i and i think the more we see of these turtles the more movies come out the animation is going to be more and more refined just to show their progression as a, as characters growing in this in this world so that'll be great to see also i can't wait to see shredder i hope he's menacing and I, I want him to be this big buffy man and i hope they tie him to splinter somehow maybe they could just like make him the man who stepped on the cockroach this play was friends with overall ninja turtles was a really good film i had a lot of fun i give it i'll give it four four pepperoni pizzas out of ten no wait no 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 that's not eight pepperoni pizzas out of ten eight pepperoni pizzas out of ten that is my final review um teenage mutant ninja turtles 2023 directed by jog uh, jeff rowe Everybody go check it out. Um, it's a great film. It's a fun film. It's also really short. It's about 90 minutes. So yeah. And get those, go, go on mornings. Get those matinee prices or whatever. However the fuck it's pronounced. But yeah. Thanks so much for watching. All right. Uh, see you guys later.